Hey guys, this is Ryan's Room, your weekly FaceTime style catch up with your host and internet bestie, Ryan Christina, where we get real about the highs and lows of life, dealing with relationships as we age, finding yourself, and everything else in between. So get relaxed or grab a cocktail on your way into Ryan's Room. Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Ryan's Room. I'm your host, Ryan Christina. Now, if you're watching the video version or you're listening to this and you're like, wow, the quality of the sound is amazing. What happened? I got a new mic. (laughs) I'm so proud of her. I actually got her secondhand on Facebook Marketplace and I'm obsessed with her. Definitely a beginner microphone. I bought it off somebody who was a singer and she was like, I use it for so long and it's so good, but I just upgraded something a little bit better. And I was like, I have a podcast. First of all, I told her I had a podcast. She was like, oh my gosh, please send the link. Like, I would love to support you. I'm like, oh my God, like not this random girl from Facebook being so nice. So if you're the girl that I bought this from on Facebook, um, Illy, <laughs> and thank you so much because I'm obsessed with it. So the other thing I do want to address as well is if you can hear any wind or fan in the background and or see my upper lip sweating at all in this episode, I'm going to need a little bit of grace. (laughs) Okay. I'm gonna need a little bit of grace. It is 95 degrees right now. And what time is it? Eight o'clock. It is 8 PM. Why is it 95 degrees? I don't know. Like if I'm just going to talk about this in every episode and be like, it's so hot. It's so hot. But like, I just am so shook by it. And it was not this hot last year. I'll tell you that right now. It was not this hot and it just wasn't as brutal. Like I lived here last year and I didn't have AC last year, but I remember, but I don't remember being like low key this miserable, you know? So like my lip is already sweating. So I'm just like constantly dabbing. I have my full ice cold water, my Stanley filled up to the brim because first of all, we know at this point I get caught in mouth because I talk a lot and then, you know, we guard it and then it's a whole thing. Um, but also I'm really just trying to stay hydrated because what everyone say it with me. It's so hot. I'm really excited for this episode because I feel like the theme of the submissions that I chose all had to do with having tough conversations with family, friends, significant others. And I feel like I've had many a hard conversation (laughs) who hasn't, you know what I mean? But I feel like, first of all, these submissions are really great. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who is sharing their stories and asking questions and being vulnerable because that's such a difficult thing to do and to share your story anonymous or not, it doesn't really matter. But the fact that you feel comfortable enough sharing it with me and sharing it with the community that we've cultivated here is really beautiful and I appreciate you. So yes, very excited for this episode. Before we get into all of that, a little bit of housekeeping is necessary. There is some chatter about some guests coming on. So get excited about that. Stay on the lookout for that. And if there's any guests that you guys want, let me know in the form that I have linked down below in every episode on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. There's a form in there that you can kind of give me any of your feedback. If you want to suggest a guest, if you have advice or questions you want to ask, you can fill all of that out in the form below. It's me already needing water. It's, it's bad. You guys also, I am in a matching set right now. It's a sports bra and legging set from Yiddy. I think I told you guys in the last episode, maybe two episodes ago that I'm now a Yiddy ambassador. So now I get sent Yiddy products and then try them on, you know, whatever, take pictures and stuff. And I've been wearing this all day. I did my workout in this today for 75 soft, which also started today. Um, I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, like I've had this on all day, super soft and I haven't been wearing anything but like the smallest pair of shorts and like a crop top every single day. And these are full leggings and I was really okay in this. It's super comfortable, super soft. They're not paying me to say this. They don't pay me period, but, um, you know, just had to give it a shout out because first of all, it's super cute. The color isn't really picking up in the camera. It's a bit more, mm, how would I describe this green? Like foresty, it's a bit more foresty green, less blue in the camera. I think it's just like the blue lights I have going on, but it's very cute and very fall coated. doesn't feel like fall, but this it's giving fall visually. 
Um, but yeah, so I started 75 Soft today and it's been really good so far. I was talking to Paloma and I was like, you know, I'm not stressed about the day to day. Like it's not the tasks that are difficult. I am very capable of trying to eat healthy. I'm very capable of working on my brand every day. I'm very capable of all these things that I set out to do. It's just the consistency that's going to be difficult for me. That's the thing that I struggle with the most is just like committing to getting better at something every single day, doing it every single day, even when I don't want to. Um, that's a really difficult thing for me to do. And so I think this is a really great opportunity for me to prove to myself that I can do things that I set my mind to and trust myself a little bit more. And yeah, I actually have like a way deeper thing about 75 soft and why I'm doing it that I want to like work on more in my head so I can talk to you guys about it because I talked to Paloma about it earlier today and I was just like kind of word vomiting but like saying the things that are on my mind and as I was saying them I'm like wow this is m deeper than I thought it actually was like I don't think I actually realized how much I do need this in my life right now I just think right now is the time you know now's the time for me to be a little bit serious you know and commit to bettering my life in a way that I really haven't before, which is really scary. And and thinking about my future and my life is incredibly daunting to me. I feel like a lot of people feel that way, but we've talked about this also too. Like I'm an avoidant. I will put things off. I will just pretend I can't see because I'm anxious about it. But all, we all know that just makes you even more anxious. And so I'm just like walking around so anxious all the time. It's just a bit deeper than I thought it was. And I do want to like break it down and talk to you guys about it later on in the process of 75 soft. Cause like I said, I just started today. So it's been so good so far and I hope that I'm able to keep it up. The other things on my list that I have to complete today to finish day one is to do gratitude journaling and oh wait, no, I think that's it. I think gratitude journaling is the only thing that I have left to do. And then after this, when I'm like getting ready for bed and stuff, I will do my journaling, which is I'm really excited about because I have a lot of thoughts and I'm really excited to get them down on paper. So if you're doing 75 soft, comment down below, or if you're doing 75 hard or any variation of any of that, comment down below if you are watching on YouTube. Um, you can also comment on Spotify as well. I know a lot of people don't comment on Spotify, um, so don't feel inclined to do so. But if you want to, you absolutely have that option as well. Um, but yeah, let me know who's doing this with me. If you want to do it with a group of people, there's a lot of people in my broadcast channel on Instagram that are doing it. And we're all kind of like holding each other accountable. I posted like an exclusive video in there today that I didn't post on my story that I just like talking to my roomies in the broadcast channel on Instagram. So you can always follow that. That's linked down below. Always every episode. Y'all know the drill. Um, it's just Ryan Christina at Instagram. So also if I keep looking over here, my monitor is to the left of me and it has all my notes and things that I want to chat about because also I low key was like raw dogging it in the other episodes, just like vibing. I had notes and stuff like that, but not like this. It was really just like brain dump and that's great and everything, but I have it kind of set up the order that I want to like do these episodes in, especially if I'm getting relaxed. Like I would just be all over the place and I forget where I'm at and what I'm doing and we got to bring it back to center. You know what I mean? We got to, we got to help ourselves out here. I was going through the submission form and I saw that somebody asked me to shout out my favorite black creators because they were looking for more diversity in who they follow and all that kind of stuff. So, so I have a list of my favorite black YouTubers, Instagram people, Instagrammers. Is that what we call them? YouTubers, TikTokers, Instagrammers. Instagrammers sounds crazy. <laughs> No, I can't even say that. I have a list of my favorite black YouTubers, TikTokers, and Instagram baddies. We'll call them that. <laughs> so I'm going to start with YouTube first because as we all know, that's my favorite app personally and the app that I use the most frequently. So number one on my list is Gabby Whiten. I love her content. She's just very chill. She's got a very calm presence. She's a New York City lifestyle, like fashion vlogger. Um, she's also a PhD student, which is such a slay. I really like her a lot. She's also plus size too. So if you are looking for some plus size inspiration, definitely go check her out. And she does a lot of reading content as well. And she does movie reviews. She's like very well-rounded. I really like her a lot. My next favorite is Madison Brown. She does long chatty pop culture trending topic video essay type videos. Very thorough, very long, um, like hours sometime. And 
they're just super interesting. I find her to be really articulate and really honest about, you know, her opinions of the things that are going on in pop culture and just in the world. So my last YouTuber that I'm going to mention, I have many, but I mean, we can do these more often, but I just wanted to do like three each kind of. The next one is Maya Beatrice. She posts like hour 15 minute long vlogs, long vlogs. And I love a long vlog. She just be like bopping around the city. Um, she goes to NYU. I haven't watched her. I just discovered her this summer, so she hasn't been in school. I might not be so inclined to watch her content during the school year because I'm not in school and I'm just way past that and I don't, that's not anything of interest to me. So I wonder if I might pull back um, once school starts, but I, they're really, really long vlogs, super just like chill, kind of feels like you're hanging out with a friend type of vibe. She's really relatable as well and just like, just chatty. It's like a long lifestyle chatty type of vlog. So if you're into that, definitely check her out. She's great. Those are my three favorite black YouTubers at the moment. And the list goes on and on, but you know, so we're going to move on to Instagrammers. Ew. Instagrammers. I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> okay. First person on Instagram that I thought of immediately when I saw this question was Lauren, the low life. I just discovered her this summer as well. And she I don't know what about her content, but it feels so original. Even though it is just lifestyle content, it feels more thought out and original and different. I don't know how to describe it, but I really, really like it. She also makes vlogs on YouTube. I think her primary platform is Instagram though, but she does make vlogs. She has like solo living New York City lifestyle content. So if you're into that, I honestly, I just realized that, oh my God, I think Madison Brown lives in New York as well. Everyone that I've mentioned thus far lives in New York. Am I missing New York? Potentially. I really might be. <laughs> I probably do miss New York, honestly, which is why I'm drawn to New York creators because I love that lifestyle so much. But anyways, love her. She's great. Very down to earth. Very just like here with us. You know what I mean? Okay. Next one on Instagram is was good. And she does like, also, let me check the pronouns. Actually, let's not assume never that. Okay. There are no pronouns. So that's fine. Okay. Was good is a fashion and styling streetwear, street style fashion account and literally the looks that they pump out every single post it's unreal i feel so inspired when i see their clothes because i just am like wow you just i can just tell that you put so much thought into this and you just have such an eye for patterns and colors and fabrics and like you can just tell when somebody just has it you know what i mean like somebody just has the eye and you're like listen you some stuff can be taught for sure but you probably didn't need to be taught that you were just gifted that's the vibe i get whenever i see any outfit that they've styled like at all i am obsessed the accessories of it all also oh please follow so so good just quality content last one for instagram is balanced less she is an over 30s lifestyle health and wellness podcaster and I actually met her through Dear Media since we were both signed to them at one point. And she is just so sweet. We've like chatted in the DMs and you know, we support each other online. But she is so kind and smart, like the wisdom of it all. She's so fun and down to earth, but also like, I feel really inspired when I, you know, consume her content. It makes me feel excited to age and she's just so beautiful and so classy it's very demure and yeah i really like her a lot i would love to meet her in person i think that that could totally happen if i was like in new york or if she was ever in la we would definitely hit each other up she's so cute i love her less illy next let's talk about tiktok the three people that i am going to shout out from tiktok i realize also are all comedy queens okay I go to TikTok to laugh, clearly. Well, I go there for the news, and that's sometimes a disheartening place um, because the state of the world, please help us, help us. Good luck to us. Good, truly good luck to us. Um, but I do go there to laugh, and I do go there to cackle, honestly, in the comfort of my own bed. And number one on this list 
is Quinn Blackwell. If you know Quinn, I think she has like over a million followers at this point. She is hilarious. She's a comedy queen. Like that's what she does. She's she's so funny. She actually, I think she models though too. She is incredible looking. Like her essence on Instagram is also so funny because she's so cracked out on TikTok. And then if you go to her Instagram, it's like instant baddie. It's truly day and night, but we love a versatile queen. You know what I mean? Next one is Dev the Menace. Now this is a little bit niche. If you are a theater person and you're on TikTok, you will have seen the Chicago dance trend going viral. And it's the, oh yes, oh yes, so yes, so yes, that. So Dev the Menace was in his living room, I think, just like making up a dance on the fly. And it went viral and everybody on Broadway started doing it. Like all, everyone everywhere started doing the dance. So I found him on TikTok, honestly, a while ago. I think it's at least been a year and I've been following him. And I didn't even know he did theater at one point or was a dancer at all. I just thought he was so hilarious. Like he was just so funny. And um, yeah, so then he was like talking about his theater days and his dance days. And I was like, oh my gosh, one of us. Like, I love that. And then he made the dance and I saw the dance and it was and it was doing well. And obviously I like everything he posts. So I liked it, moved on. And then I saw someone else doing the dance. And I was like, oh, maybe this is just like, uh, the dance like maybe this is just the dance from the show I don't know like I don't know Chicago like that so but then I looked at the caption and the person gave Dev the Menace dance credits and I was like oh my god how I iconic and that video was going viral and I was like hold on a second so then I go back to Dev's this is lore that nobody asked for whatever then I go back to Dev's profile and I'm looking and then his video is pinned and it's got like a million views and I'm like hello like this is crazy so then I see all of Broadway every show ever all of the theater kids posting it and I'm like wow this is iconic and then literally two days ago I was on TikTok and I saw that Debbie Allen she's a black icon and she stitched his TikTok and was like Dev I love you so much whatever and then he stitched that and he was like sobbing he was like oh my god Debbie Allen like girl I love you and I was like this is so I was like wiping my tears because I was like the internet is such an insane crazy sometimes terrible place but then stuff like this happens and now like Dev's getting so much recognition and hopefully getting opportunities from this as he deserves and it's just so awesome because he was just doing something that he loves like he was just dancing did this lose light okay well anyway yeah so that's just super inspiring and I mean he's so funny if we even remove the whole Chicago viral dance he's hilarious just born funny you know what I mean like not even trying just is last one is Mechabelli. she is a California girl but she's a northern California girl so not like me I'm a SoCal girl but she's so funny she does like brackets and stuff all the time too so she'll do or like ranking TikToks with that filter she's just she's one of those others that is like hot off the dome type of vibe like she's just got it she has her cute little short blonde hair she's so cute just a vibe really I really like her TikToks I don't know sometimes she talks about like other creators and stuff and like what they're doing and I'm like I don't really care about the drama of it all like I just want to laugh you know but when she's cracking jokes, I'm ch I'm chuckling. Okay, I'm cackling. Um, so yeah, those are some of my favorite black creators on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Please check them all out. I will have all of their links down below. Yes. Okay. Shall we? Uh, shall we relax a little? Okay, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am gonna be a little stressed about these glasses because my camera. You see what it's doing right now. Yes, welcome back. She gets confused. She gets confused when she can't see my eyes. I stress about the sunglasses of it all. What can we do? How can we solve this? Maybe we put an external light on the camera so I can wear my glasses. One moment, please. Okay, let's see how she does with that. Okay, first admission. This is from April. She says, I need advice. Lately, I've been feeling like I'm the only one putting effort into my friendship. I'm usually the planner pretty much all of the time, and I'm the one who's making plans, hosting gatherings, and texting to hang out. For context, I just finished up college and I have been dealing with a family member having cancer, so I've been busier than I normally would be in the summer. So when I was thinking of my friends after I finished school and had the time to breathe, I realized nobody was really reaching out to me. And the only time I had seen my friends in the last couple of months was when I texted them to hang out. 
and even then they'd make separate plans without me that same day. I totally understand that everyone gets busy and has their own priorities, but it's hard to not feel like I'm nobody's first choice. Part of it is definitely my anxiety hitting me, but I don't know how to go forward with my thoughts. Anyways, love you, Ryan. Your content has been really comforting to me, and I can't wait to see all the amazing things you do. April. Oh. Illy. Thank you so much. I need some water for this one. I'd like to take it a little bit back. I'd like to go to the beginning of this. That says... Lately, I've been feeling like I'm the only one putting in effort because I'm usually the one that makes the plans. And if I don't make the plans, they don't show up. Reading that and I was like, OK, that makes sense. You usually plan. You haven't been planning. You've been busy. Um, so you guys haven't hung out. But why has nobody reached out? I definitely don't love the fact that your friends didn't reach out um, at all, especially if they knew that you were going through this thing with your family member. Like that's like really serious. And you would think that you know, your friends would reach out. And obviously, like you said, everybody's busy. Everyone's dealing with their own stuff. But the other thing too, that I have a question about is you saying that they make separate plans without you. That feels not it. I don't like that. Cause what we, you couldn't hit me up. We couldn't hang out, but y'all can hang out. I don't know. Again, yes, of course everybody's got stuff. Everybody's doing their own thing. Nobody's owed anything for sure. Um, except we're all grown adults here. And so if you don't want to hang out, that's fine. Maybe we like have that conversation or like, I will ask this, have you brought this up in any way or like talk to anyone at like, have you like been like, Oh yeah. I mean, you know, if I don't plan it, it don't happen. Like, have you like joked about it at all either? I'm just curious because like some people really just can't plan and just like are also really bad at texting. I am not great at texting back, um, not because I don't want to talk. Just I'm just I just feel like notifications are my worst enemy. Um, so, you know, um, but and like maybe bringing it to their attention, too, is something you can do if you're not like I'm not trying to just like drop these people like I don't you know. I think a lot of things can be solved by having conversations, but maybe if you're like, if you bring it up and they're not receptive or like kind of brush it off or like whatever, then you can be like, okay, you guys don't hit me up because there is like clearly a disconnect here or whatever. Like, or they're like, oh my God, I didn't even know that. Like, I'm so sorry. And I just been blah, blah, blah. And then you guys can have a conversation. Cause I think there's really, it's really one of two things, right? It's really, I really didn't, I'm sorry. I just have been in my own head and I, whatever, whatever. Or, yeah, there's a vibe, and the vibe is, you know, iffy. You can pretty much figure that out, I feel like. I don't think that was good advice, but I'm always pro just like, hey, so what is the tea real quick, though? <laughs> because I have found that sometimes people really just, they really be living in their own world, but also if somebody wants to make it clear that they're like not trying to hang out with you or whatever, like they do, you know what I mean? That's the thing too. And, and honestly, I think them hanging out with each other and not hitting you up can say a lot about how they do feel about you. I would try to have a conversation, like a very chill, calm, cool, collective conversation. Like, Hey, I was just wondering, like, we're like, cool. Right. And then if they're like, yeah, why not? And you'd be like, Oh, like, I don't know. Like, I just haven't really heard from anybody. And like, you guys hang out and I haven't like, I just will also would like totally love to hang out too. And I just haven't really been invited. So I just like didn't know if we had a problem or whatever. Cause then they could be like, oh no, there's no problem. We just, whatever the reason is, you know what I mean? Um, so maybe go about it like that. And just like, a, are you guys mad at me? <laughs> and then they could be like, no, or no, we're not mad, but we don't really want to hang out or no. Oh my God. Sorry. Type of vibe. You know, thank you for that submission, April. Next we have Mary Elizabeth and then parentheses fake name. Okay. Thank you, Mary Elizabeth. She says, I need advice. So I have this friend we'll call Lola. She and I have been friends. Also, I've been watching Big Mouth. So Lola, I just immediately pictured Lola from Big Mouth. Anyway, I have this friend we'll call Lola. She and I have been friends since we were six years old. We are now 34. Through the years, she's done things a real friend wouldn't do. But I don't know how to tell her I don't trust her anymore without making our relationship uncomfortable because we have a lot of friends in common and we'll continue seeing her. Any advice? Um, well in the first, okay. You first said that 
through the years, she's done things a real friend wouldn't do. But you're worried about making the relationship uncomfortable. Is the relationship not already uncomfortable because of the things she's done, right? Unless she doesn't know that she's done them, but I, I don't know how that would be. I mean, unless you've really never said anything and she really doesn't know that what she's doing or what she's done is like terrible. I don't know. I mean, I also am trying to think too, what would telling her that you don't trust her also do? Like, can you just separate yourself from her? Cause if, cause here's the thing, what also what I'm gathering here too, is that you guys, okay. So you said you guys have friends in common and I can see the hesitation in wanting to like make that the group dynamic, like uncomfortable or just like the association of knowing and we're friends with everyone type of, I understand that. But I feel like if you can't trust your friend, the relationship doesn't need to be uncomfortable. We're not friends. I'm not your friend anymore. You know, people I know which is unfortunate, but you know what I'm saying? Or you tell her how you feel about the things that she's done and allow her to, I don't know, apologize or do the right thing or whatever. I don't know what the situation was. So whatever she did, if she can make it right, are you willing to forgive her and move on? Or are you just wanting to have the conversation to tell her that you don't trust her anymore? Because if you were going to do all that, I... It's, I would just kind of ghost low key. Like I don't, I don't condone ghosting, but if she has been acting like not your friend, who cares if you ghost her? You don't need, at this point, I feel like you don't know her anything. If you are literally saying she's done things a real friend would never do, I don't owe you anything. You've been terrible to me and I'm going to ghost you if I want to. I don't owe you an explanation because <laughs> you're doing these things. You know what I mean? I don't know that maybe that's a little harsh to not even to just ghost and not give them the benefit of the doubt. But I mean, I, I just feel like through the years, she's done things a real friend wouldn't do. I'm like, like what? Are you sleeping with my man? Are you like, what, like, what is the tea? I don't need to explain anything to you if you're going around doing stuff like that or like stealing from my house or I don't know, crazy things. I'm like, I don't owe you shit actually. No, no I do not. The only reason I would ha want to have a conversation with her is if I was down to forgive her. Otherwise, th to talk about what, bro? I don't trust you anymore. She's like, okay. I'm like, okay. You know, like, I feel like you only need to chat if you're down to forgive her potentially, right? Or if you're down to hear her out and like, be like, that's valid. That makes sense. I totally, I forgive you. Okay. It's all good. No awkwardness. We move on. But, uh, I don't know. Ooh, but you know what I was looking over? I wasn't even taking this into consideration. You guys have been friends for like 20 years since you were six years old and you're both now 34. I didn't even take that into consideration at all. That's tough. But I mean, 20 years of her being a bad friend, how many more years do you need? Like how many more years do you need for her to prove that she's not a good friend? You know, at some point, at some point, I feel like he got to let it go or just accept that she's just like not that great of a friend. And you're like, yeah, I just maybe won't confide in her or tell her anything important and we'll just be cool surface friends and whatever. I don't trust her, but it's fine. No, no beef. You know what I mean? Because there are people like that, too, where you're like, we aren't like this, but it's really not that serious. I'll say, hey, hey, girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm, selfie. Yeah. But like we not I'm not. <laughs> surface surface you know what i mean so if you're down for that too maybe that's all she needs to be and let it let it let it be that sorry that i didn't acknowledge the age thing i like totally that just that part just left my brain but that yeah that's my advice on that a few ways you can go about it um none of which are right or wrong it's just a matter of what you choose to do but the long of the short is if you don't trust a friend if you don't trust somebody like there's not there's nothing we can do here that's it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you can try to build it back up, but are you down for that? Last one. I know this episode's going kind of fast. You guys, I'm sweating so much and I'm so sorry. Last one is from Anonymous. She says, advice, please. Female in my late twenties and I'm so tired of being a closeted bi woman. Not a single person in real life knows. I have a partner of over 10 years and I feel like I've missed my opportunity to come out to him. Early in the relationship, I didn't want him to take advantage of it. And now that we've been together long enough to know he'd respect my boundaries, I feel like I kept it a secret so long that I'll make him question what else I'm hiding, which for the record is nothing else. 
but he has some deep insecurities. Now that I'm married, I feel like admitting I'm bi should be irrelevant and unnecessary because I'm happy in my marriage and not looking to change anything about it. My family is another deal too. Dad and mom have made comments about gayness not being natural, quote unquote. They don't promote hate or rudeness towards the LGBTQ plus community, and they are kind to the gay strangers in their lives. But I also know it's not their ideal, quote unquote, and it'll change how they see me and disappoint them. Even my best friend doesn't know. People made jokes about us being together when we were in school, and she would openly say she's put off by gay people. Oof. God. We've been best friends for 15 years. Oh my God. And I don't want my sexuality to be the reason I lose her. I know no one is entitled to know about anything about my sexuality, and that being closeted doesn't discount that I am in fact a bi woman. T. That's facts. I was going to say that, but you said it first, but that's correct. But it feels so tough to navigate, especially in the Hispanic community. Oh, yeah. How did you navigate coming out to friends, family, hell, even strangers? Thank you and keep up your work. <sighs> coming out is such a like. I don't even know what word to use. And I also don't I am not the spokesperson for coming out. Okay, I also want to say that every single person's experience is different. And I'm not even going to talk about mine right now because it's not really relevant. But I do want to acknowledge the thing we already did acknowledge about how no one is entitled to know anything about your sexuality or anything like that. Um, And that being closeted does not discount your queerness at all, period. Which you know, I know, we all know. And if you didn't know, now you know. I want to say before I even say anything, because I'm going to just kind of be all over the place, but this is really like deep and tough and hard. And it's just layers on layers, right? So even anything that I say, please take with a grain of salt. That's just period baseline all the time, always for everyone, period. Okay. I only know what I know. I only know my own experiences and I only know some words. Okay. So please, especially with something like this, like I am not telling you to do a certain thing, be a certain way. You should do this. You shouldn't do that. You really need to listen to your gut and do what is best for you at the end of the day. No one is going to be able to tell you exactly what to do. You're the only one that knows. So I want to just say that you talked about, uh, you feel like you've kept it a secret for so long that it'll make him question what else you've been hiding. And nothing, that's nothing else. You've been hiding nothing else. But I hear that. And I think that's a fair thought for you to have. And in the moment, a fair thought for him to have. However, you also mentioned that he has a lot of deep insecurities. We all do, right? And it's our job to work through them and do what we need to do in order to get through the insecurities and not just let it take over, right? So keep that in mind when I say what I'm about to say. If you have been able to communicate your feelings and communicate well together in general, and if the relationship has been open and honest this whole time, I would hope that he would remember that if he does start to feel like, oh my gosh, there are other things she's hiding. Like, what is she not telling me? Like, this is, this is, this. I would hope that he could be like, hold on, we have had a great relationship. The communication has been great. It's been 10 years of bliss and love. And also, hopefully he won't make it about him. I think that's the other thing, too, that I can understand him having an opinion, having feelings about the situation at hand. For sure. But like you're coming out to him. You're like, you're the only person that I've told. I'm scared, obviously, to tell so-and-so and and -and so-and-so, which I'm sure he knows because he, you guys have been together for 10 years. I think there are a lot of factors in the situation that could help him calm himself down and secure himself and feel secure in the relationship. If he can just remember all those things, remember the great 10 years of amazing communication and openness and trust that you guys have always had. The fact that this is about you and about your journey as a person and your journey as a queer person and you wanting to navigate that, trying to work it through with your family, trying to work it through with your best friend. Like this is a whole thing. And if he could be supportive of that for you, if you choose to tell your family and your friends that that would be best case scenario. And I, and I obviously I don't know your relationship. I literally don't even know who you are, but best case scenario is that you guys have had a beautiful 
10 year relationship that he can remember if he does start to feel insecure. And I hope that he's working through the deep insecurities that he currently has, you know, this aside, I hope that that's something that he's working on. I hope that's something we're all working on, right? I could do better. And so, but that's our responsibility. It's not your partner's responsibility. It's not your friends. It's not your mom. You're responsible for your self work. So yeah. I hope that was helpful because I feel like he just needs to be your support system in this because if, again, if you do tell your family and it turns out to be like a whole thing, you're going to want to lean on him and you're going to need to lean on him and telling your best friend too, like that's, and hopefully also too, best case scenario is that people aren't bigoted. Best case scenario is that we can all lead with love and let that be our first instinct instead of to one, make it about us and two, hey, maybe this is a time for you to to like try to find some queer friends and talk about it with them. Because this is a lot of queer people's journeys is that they're very stressed about coming out, you know, and whether they have a partner or not, whether they're bi, gay, lesbian, whatever, doesn't matter. There is a similarity in all the stories, right, is is the stress of coming out. So yes, anonymous i hope that was helpful at all i am rooting for you i really really hope that it's just better than you could have imagined and if not i hope that you do have the support system that you deserve and i'm here supporting you i know everyone here listening and watching is supporting you too and i really appreciate you sending in this message i appreciate all of you for sending in these messages you guys sharing your stories and being vulnerable is just such a beautiful thing and i know that it's scary I struggle with being vulnerable very much. So you guys are also helping me and I appreciate that so much. Not the sappiness of it all. Okay, how are the eyes doing? Okay, they're a little sleepy, but that's okay. How's the mustache? Wet, okay. But that is gonna be it for this week's episode. I really hope that you enjoyed. Be sure to be sure to fill out the form in the description of this episode and leave your comments, your suggestions, your questions, or all of the above. And yes, I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode of Ryan's Room. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on a new episode every single Friday. Follow at Ryan's Room on socials. And if you want to watch the video version of certain episodes, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ryan Christina, for all of the Ryan's Room goodness. I love you guys so much, and I will see you next week for another episode of Ryan's Room.